Imagine building an entire medieval village, a Victorian street, or a modern city block. And instead of modeling every single window by hand, just drop in one node and watch them appear like magic. This 3D Tutor procedural window generator for Blender, the fastest way to create endless window variations with zero stress. With just a single geometry node setup, you can generate beautiful windows in seconds. Whether you need sleek modern glass, chunky timber frames, or ornate gothic details, this node adapts instantly. No more wasting hours manually modeling frames, panels, or shutters. Every part of your window is fully customizable. You can control the width, height, and glass thickness, add as many vertical or horizontal panes as you want, or even throw in diagonal grids for extra stylistic touch. It is completely procedural, non-destructive, and optimized for Blender 4 and beyond. Think of the possibilities. Fantasy villages with charming leaded windows, Victorian mansions with intricate leather details, all generated from one flexible, reusable node group. When you open up the Geometry Node Blender file, you'll have all sorts of variations for the windows, the procedural windows that we have. All of them use the same Geometry Node, the same procedural Geometry Node that you see over here in the Modifiers tab. And to create your own one, you can do it from scratch by either creating a mesh and simply adding a Modifier Geometry Node and switching it to Window. That way you have a very good, nice base to make use out of to then be able to control it from the scratch and create your own variations if needed, just like that. Or alternatively, what I would recommend you is simply grabbing one of the presets that you have over here and just simply using them. Some windows are made out of two geometry nodes, as you can see, like so, just to show that you can make some additional tweaks and controls to have some more unique type of shapes just like that. Anyways, going back to the setup, let's go ahead and grab this little window over here, over here. So I'm going to click Shift D and just make a duplicate, and then we can use it within any of the scenes. A quick tip, if you want to drag this onto a different scene, all you have to do is use Control C to make a copy, and then you can just go on to your own personal type of a scene and click Control V to paste it into the setup with all the necessary components that the window is using. So going back to the setup, what do we have? Well, first things first, we have the controls for the width and the height. So we can make a wider style of a window, just like that. We can make it larger, higher, all of that good stuff. Next up, we have the thickness for the glass. So this will allow us to change the thickness of the glass itself, how thick or how thin we want this to be uh, for just additional depth controls. If you want to be used for the inner and outer type of scenes, you're free to do so. Afterwards, we have frame width and offset. So this will control the inner section of the frame itself. So this will be the this frame over here, as you can see over like so. We're able to control how thin, how thick the frame is. And holding shift, we can make a finer control and offset will allow us to well say how uh, how close it is how much outwards it goes from the setup so that's a very nice control as well and we also have horizontal segments and vertical segments so this is again for this same frame by increasing it we'll have more panels within our setup like so and we're going to have a very nice type of a setup for the window and you might have noticed that there are additional detail within the segments themselves within the window panels and these will be the segment uh, horizontal and vertical grid if we were to change this to one or zero we're going to get ourselves just custom plain type of panels but once we start increasing these we're going to be able to get some nice detail out of it so we can make use out of these segments to get some additional window supports. We can change them to be diagonal or just simple pattern type that goes horizontally and vertically. And we have thickness options over like so, so we can have some thinner, some thicker type of variations. And they're going to look great in both diagonal and non-diagonal versions. And there's also the controls for offset, which will allow us to slightly offset it 
from the glass itself we can even put it inside of the glass if we wanted to make it seem like it's some barbed wire which we can do so by changing the material we're going to go over that uh, later down the line but for now all we need to know that we can just have some really nice type of setup out of these planes just like that now what's nice about these intersection segments is that not only can we have some really nice designs out, out of it like so but we can also create intersection decoration and these will be the placement parts in between the segments so they're going to be allowing us to use a really nice setup adding detail on our on our windows we can change up the scale and offset to have a nicer control with the setup just like that What's nice about these intersection decorations though, is that not only can we change up the scale and offset, we can also change up the decoration itself. So if we look at the scene collections, we have a collection for GeoNode assets, and these are going to be our default items required for a window. I'm going to hide one of the windows since it is overlapping, but by default, it's using this decoration for our glass piece. And what we can do is we can make, for example, a duplicate out of it. We can change up the shape if we want to, like so, to make it, for example, maybe a little, a little bit spiky if we want to. And then we can go back onto our intersection decoration, change the decoration to the created one. So I believe it's going to be this one over here. And there we go. We're going to have our own custom intersection decoration. For the sample, it's going to be set as gold, but you can change up the metal to be pretty much anything you want. Next up, we have frame controls, the frame tab, which will allow us to get a nicer setup out of the main uh, outer frame of the window. So we have left, right, which will control the vertical beams on the side and top to bottom, which allows us to control the horizontal beams. So by changing this up, for example, we can make the beam to be quite a bit thicker on the sides but not as wide perhaps so we can just lower the width a little bit to have a thinner type of beams and for the top we can for example uh, change up the thickness to make it stand out a little bit more and have the width um, well to be a little bit thicker so we're going to have a real nice foundation for the window just like that Furthermore, if we're playing with the style of the window, we also have supports. Supports will allow us to create bottom mesh pieces for the supports themselves. And we have, for example, things like count, which will allow us to increase the count amount of these supports. We also have scale, which will allow us to, well, change up the scale and the width factor. By changing the width factor to one, we're going to have it uh, on the complete outer sides of the window but as we get closer to a value of zero it's going to be more centered towards the well the center of the window so you have full control over that additionally we are using a custom mesh object for this so if we were to make a duplicate out of this mesh we can make our own custom piece so this is what being used by default a nice little base support but let's say we want to make our own custom setup we can go ahead and create our own cube like so we're going to go then on to edit mode make it the well similar size to what we had previously with the support and i'm going to click gz to move it downwards that way we have it uh, with the origin point right at the top like so just like that and afterwards we can select the edge piece like so click ctrl b make a nice bevel play around with the bevel itself we can go even to custom shape and we can play around with well segments like so and create a unique type of a shape just like that then we can go back on to the setup and simply use this as a custom support so if we were to find this cube that we created we're going to get something like this and that gives us some real nice controls over well the setup just like that Next up, we have shutters. So shutters will allow us to create uh, two objects on the both sides of the window. And they are going to be custom objects as well. Same as supports. By default, this is going to be this little piece of wood over here. But you can create your own one just as easily. Or you can make a duplicate out of this and make some additional customizations. So for example, maybe we want to have just like that. 
And once we create our own custom detail, we can simply go on to shutter section. We can select the shutters uh, part like this. So let's go ahead and just simply replace it with this one. And there we go. That's what we're going to get. Now the controls that we have are actually quite nice because we have options for the shutters to be closing or opening. So we have a zero to one value and zero will be closing the shutters and one will be completely opening them. You might have noticed that they are overlapping now, but that's easily fixable with this offset value like so. We can just simply offset it a little bit and there we go. We're going to have ourselves a very nice type of a setup. So this offset needs to be adjusted based on the frame that we have, but all in all, we can have it partially basically open type of window. Uh, this type of stuff might be quite nice. And we also have the thickness. So if we want to control the thickness a little bit, we are free to do so to make sure we get the right type of a scenic setup out of our windows. And that's pretty much it. We finally have ourselves the materials tab, which will include all the default generated asset pieces that comes out of the window, including glass shader, segment frame, window frame, left, right frame, top, bottom frame. If I was to go on to one of the wood parts, it is a simple type of a PBR material. The only thing though, is that instead of using the default texture attributes, if you were to use Node Wrangler add-on and using Control Shift and T to import PBR textures, you'd have texture coordinate. You simply need to replace this with an attributes node, have it named UV map in capitals, AP, so UV map, and plug in the vector onto the mapping, and that will give you the right type of wood that's usable with the geometry node. So again, you can pretty much use it with anything you want. This also is set up with an edgeware, a little bit of an edgeware. So when we are in cycles, we're going to have ourselves this little bit of a softer edges on its mesh. So those would be the controls for the setup. So for example, I can change the segment wood to this one. I have the top bottom frame be another slightly darker shade of wood. And that's just going to give us a very nice type of a look or even golden. We can change it to that as well if we want to. As for the objects that are used within the custom setup, so supports, the shutters, they need to be applied the material manually from within the items themselves. So for example, this one over here, if I was to remove the material, it's going to remove it as well. It also needs to have the same type of shader uh, setup. So for example, if I had that default texture coordinate, it's going to be visible for the mesh, but it's not going to be visible for the geometry node. So make sure you have the attribute set properly. And that way it's going to work. Unfortunately, that's the workaround with the geometry nodes. Save time, unlock creativity and build worlds full of unique custom windows. Grab the 3D Shooter Procedural Window Generator from Blender today and start turning blank walls into works of art. Until next time, happy modeling everyone!